We are ready to go. Um, I am going to be the first to tell you this is not, this is a rising out of chaos, <laughs> that, that we have pulled this together as fast as we can and, and we want to give you as much information as we can. I'm not loud enough. They say that, oh, I have to get closer? Oh, okay. Okay, I thought this one was more sensitive. <laughs> I'm always back there. I don't stand up here. <laughs> so so this, this presentation, we are going to give you as much information as we can. We have pulled it together very quickly. This is not the new sanctuary thing where we spent months trying to think about what questions are people going to ask. This is, this is like in the last week. So yep. um, bear with us. And we are, I think we're ready to go. Yep, we are. You want to do the first part? Because oh. you've got the background and all that. Sure. What the heck? So we're, we're just going to kind of <laughs> do our best to, to talk to you about everything, what's, what's been going on and everything. So uh, first of all, let's see here. Whoop. I have this, your email. You want to switch a slide? Or maybe it's not active. There we go. OK. So uh, we just want to kind of give you a little bit. So this is our agenda today. We're just going to give you some background. Tatiana is going to come and uh, talk a little bit about her experience down at the border. She's been volunteering down there. And as you can say, she's taken in two different families into her home. Um, one is staying at her mother-in-law's uh, apartment while she's out of town uh, as well. And then we're going to kind of give you a little uh, tell you what all of the things that are needed and what Nancy and I are proposing. For those of you who don't know, um, Nancy Lockery is the president of our congregation, pre uh, president of the Board of Trustees. I think everybody here knows that, but I just want to make sure y'all did. Um, so, all right. So we're just going to dive right in. So some of the background of it, I gave you some of that in um, the service as well, right? As I said, this is actually a picture of the gymnasium that is housing um, the Ukrainians at the border uh, right now, but uh, they're looking, they might need to shut it down, uh, which would be absolutely horrible because right now, as I said, there are people just lining up on sidewalks. They, there's only, they can only process 50 an hour to go through and they're doing now up to a thousand a day and it's just become crazy because you have thousands of people arriving and so the backlog there is really terrible and this is one of the few ways that they can come in relatively quickly into the United States and like I said they the vast majority of people have a place to go like 98 percent have a place to go they got friends family or there's a host family there's actually websites where you can sign up to be a host family and they'll vet you and everything like that as well so everything that's been done has all been grassroots all of it. There is no government agency that is working on this at all. Um, that was the thing that that's why it's made it a little bit kind of chaos. But there's some wonderful, absolutely wonderful people that are working on things. There is an organization called Slavics.org that has, uh, has been working down there uh, trying to get things organized. They're working with a few churches. There are organizations like the Jewish Family Services that help people if they don't have the money to get where they need to go that are there. There are organization, organizations like Home for Refugees that are trying to help people who have longer two needs who don't have a place to go. Right. So there's there are organizations that are involved in this, but the ones that we know of the vast majority are literally people like Tatiana going down to the border going, how can I help? That to me is mind boggling um, that there was no plan whatsoever. And part of it is, is that they didn't really expect everybody to come through Tijuana. Like they, it's kind of just an interesting loophole that the, they can let people in at their own discretion down there. So at any rate, that's some of the background. And I want to get Tatiana to, to talk about it. She asked if she could be right up. Let me go see if I can get her. If you want to give any more, or do you want me to? Yeah, go ahead, because I do have okay. one more thing I wanted okay. to say. One thing I wanted to explain was the difference in a town hall. That this is, this is a town hall meeting, which it means it's not an official congregational meeting. We're not going to take any votes. Um, I think what we're proposing I don't think needs congregational action. It will go through the board. But I don't think this, this is not a congregation level decision. But we definitely are he having this because we want you to be informed and we want to gauge your enthusiasm for this because this is not something Sean and I can do on our own. We, there, we, it would in involve a lot of people helping and we need to know about that, what your, what your interest is. So, Tatiana. Tatiana. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Hi. So, um, 
So what should, what should I talk about? What is it, would it been a little bit of, just a little bit about your experience down at the border, what, what's right. been going on down there? Right, yeah. Right into the mic, okay. I just want, I just want to start with, um, what happened to me uh, Thursday, Friday was, and I'm not exaggerating, the holiest experience of my life. I can't compare it to anything else. Just going there, so I just, I just draw, I, I, I hear of the need, and they really need people there. It doesn't matter if you don't speak um, Russian, Ukrainian, but of course, language does help a lot. So, you know, I've met a lot of people who do that regularly, I've talked to them, I've decided I'm just gonna go, because there is need everywhere, like, there is need for drivers. So you have a car, you're willing to go for two hours to the Tijuana border. On the American side, when people are coming out, they need a ride to a motel, they need a ride to a host family, they need, a, they need rides, and Uber is you know, expensive to them, and it's just wonderful to have people who are just volunteer and just, just driving them. So that's one thing that you can do. You don't need you know, um, language for that, because there are people translating there. Just you know, um, serving people food at the, at the kitchen, making sandwiches, um, just, just welcoming people, saying, welcome to America, we're so happy you're here. Like People just cry, and they come in. And then um, on the other side, in um, Mexico, um, there is a lot of need there too. But, so I went there in my, in our uh, old Mitsubishi Montero for two hours. Um, on the way, someone asked me to pick up some um, stuff um, in Irvine from a woman, just boxes and boxes and boxes of sa you know, sanitary needs, diapers, clothes, so I took that, so I brought that to uh, one of the churches that are doing the shelter. And it's um, <sighs> Promise Church. Promise Church in, they're not quite in um, San Diego, they're in a small town, Chula Vista. Does that, yeah, so they're in Chula Vista, a tiny church, a tiny church. So that was my first uh, view of what's going on. So I, I, ca I come to the church and right away I see people just walking around, families walking around, it was so hot outside, and they're just walking around, talking, so somber, nobody's laughing, nobody's running, kids are not running and laughing, like, you know, I, I'm bringing, and people came out right away, volunteers, um, taking stuff in, and I went into the church, and it's a tiny place, and there are so many people there, because they just, they cannot say no, probably. I mean, they're taking more people than they can, but there are all these families sitting there, there's kitchen food for them. You know, kids are playing in the corner, there are some toys and books, and, and kids are fine. I mean, I was just amazed, kids are fine. They're, they, I've read some, I don't know if that's true, but, but children, they get over certain things quicker than adults, especially when they have the opportunity to be in a normal situation. So I played with the kids a little bit, and I, went for, I did not see the dorms. I, I don't know where people sleep there. I just saw people. And I just, you know, I've, I've, I've lived in the U.S. for 22 years now, and I'm used to my American smile and just, you know, going in. And, and people, they don't even, so many people, they don't even look into your eyes. They don't smile. They're, I mean, it's obvious they're very, they're very sad and they're depressed and they're thinking ahead, what's going to happen? I mean, they're very grateful, right, for the opportunity, but they're constantly thinking of what's the next step? Nobody knows when the war is going to be over. And when the war is over, they will need at least 10 years to rebuild and then 10 more to demine. And that's what everybody's been telling me. Like, we're afraid to go back with kids. There are mines everywhere. Um, the Russians, they just, you know, the, the mine, somebody was telling me, you know, they're supposed to do it by a military map when they mine. I don't know what that's about, but like it's, a, it's, it's criminal, it's a war crime to just mine, throw mines everywhere into people's yards and parks and everywhere, you cannot do that. But anyway, so that's, that's a concern. So, so, so I stopped at the church, I did all that, and on my way to the border, my car broke down. Transmission. I'm like, oh my gosh, no, 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 what to do? There was a mechanic right there. I, I went, I drove to the mechanic. He's like, 1,800 and two day, days work, and I can <laughs> or you know, more money and a week of work, and it's, the car is not worth that. So I, I'm calm on the phone with David, I'm frantic. He's like, well, 
call AAA. We have Prime membership. AAA actually told us we can tow your car. It's it's included. I'm like, yeah, at least that. And then another friend was coming, so I waited for her at a store because I I got a bunch of stuff at the store, groceries, and she came. She picked me up. Actually, two friends in a car. They picked me up. And we go to the border. So we got there at about 5. So I was there at 12, and then all of that. And then only at 5, we were there. So because we came late, we decided we're just going to stay overnight there. And uh, I mean, the need is dire. People constantly cross, and then they come to the US side. They come out, and you welcome them. And right away, you say, what can I help you with? Right, and they have all these questions, and 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 so there is like there are tables with food on the left. Volunteers constantly bring food, hot food, you know, McDonald's burgers, chickens from Costco, whatever, whatever, right? And other volunteers are putting them out on the tables, and there is another corner with some clothes that people can go look through and flip-flops and hats and sunscreen and toiletries. Um, some dentist, uh, you know, gave a bunch of, you know, kits. That, that, that was really useful because that's what people, because some people, I mean, they've been traveling through Mexico because it's cheaper not to fly into Tijuana but somewhere else, and then they took buses. And I don't know, how, I mean, uh, different stories. And just some people, um, Tamara, who you all saw, She's the, she was the first woman, well, second, that came up to me and started telling me, telling me her life story, crying in Ukrainian. And I didn't have the heart to tell her that I could not understand a word she was telling me. <laughs> so I'm like, da, da, da. Because you, you respond, many Ukrainians, they actually, they, they speak both languages fluently. And they may prefer to speak Russian because they grew up speaking Russian. But they understand Ukrainian perfectly. So she assumed I was Ukrainian and I understood her. But then I figured out, you know, then she, she, she figured it out and started speaking more Russian to me. So she came to, she came from Vinitsa, a small town that was bombed. She came to Spain, Madrid, and then from Madrid she traveled to Rome. And in Rome, her only bag, she just had, she, she had to carry on with her laptop, uh, uh, papers, that proved that she owns her house and some uh, papers of heritage that she got from her mom, it was lost. The bag was lost. And her and everything else, I mean, all, all her clothes, everything that she took. So she had, like, nothing. And, you know, and, and that's it, because it happened, you know, like, two days ago. She doesn't have hope that she will get the bag back. And, you know, so we talked, and I'm like, well, where, where can you go? There is a church situation, you know, there is. And you're like, I, I need to think about it, I need to think about it. So she was there while we were working. She was helping us. And so what I did, what I did was I, I gave my phone to a lot of people. They just need to make a call to someone in the U.S., and there is no Wi-Fi. So they need, they need to call. So I did that. Then booking a motel that is affordable is a big problem, especially in the middle of the night. They, you know, uh, so many times uh, everything's booked. There is nowhere for them to go. Or $100 is a lot of money for people, a lot of money. And I wish there was some kind of a fund. All of this, I mean, I, 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 what's incredible to me, US opened this corridor, right, um, and they, prepared nothing for them, so absolutely nothing. So they get a year of legal stay here. They cannot work here. They can apply for a work visa, but it takes up to six months to get a work visa. So you can come here with your family, with your, some women had six, I met a woman with six little kids. Husband is over there. So she, co she comes here, she's grateful that she can, she's safe here for a year, but she cannot work legally. And how, I don't know what, what, what they're thinking because some people are very, how, how do I say it? Some people suspect that it's, it's all, the purpose is they're not really welcomed here. American government just wants to sort of give them a year and then hoping that they will go back. That's why there is no opportunity to stay here long term and work. That's what it looks like to people. 
and it's quite, as you can imagine, offensive and, and hurtful. Um, so, you know, so I, I, I booked a bunch of hotels for people, uh, motels. Uh, I, you know, help someone find a, a ticket, another ticket, just talking to people, listening to them. Uh, and um, and yeah, and Tamara decided to stay and help, and, and then I told her, you know, my, my actually, luckily, my mom, who some of you have met, so she went to Michigan for a month uh, to take care of her house and everything. So her apartment, one bedroom apartment in Newport Beach is available, and it's ridiculous not to offer it, right, in this situation. So of course, I told Tamara, there is a place if you're willing to wait, but I'll be here till six in the morning, seven in the morning, and she decided to wait. So that's how we got Tamara, and she's been with us since Friday in, in my mom's apartment. And then also, same night, there was a family, a young family with a 10-year-old and a seven-year-old, and they were looking for a place to stay. And when I showed them the prices for the hotels, I mean, I can just see the, the, the man's face just, you know, and he's like, oh, thank you so much, so great. I mean, everybody's so calm and patient and grateful because sometimes it takes forever to find something and they're just sitting there and I ask them for their passports over and over again to type in the name and everything. I mean, and, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, if I were them, after everything they've been through, they're so patient. But anyway, so this family, it was obvious they could not afford it. And the churches at about midnight, all the churches said, we have no space, sorry, we cannot take anybody. So imagine this, right? Uh, people who don't have the money, the only opportunity for them uh, to, to not to be on the street is to be in this, it's not even a shelter. I, it's, you've seen some pictures. Um, it's just, I mean, there is, there are like, how do you call them? The, 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 tar the tarp, you know, uh, roofs, that you like protect yourself from the sun and, and foldable chairs that volunteers brought and a bunch of blankets, every, every, everything's uh, grassroots effort. There are no organizations, nonprofits that are involved in, in this. I mean, they're involved in, in you know, money and everything, but none of them, as, as far as I know, maybe I'm wrong, are involved in just helping people this way, you know, coming there and talking to people, getting them places to stay and, and, and so on and so forth. And only these three or four churches now that, and then they, they let like 50 people a day in, 50 people a day and more, and it's, they say it's gonna be much, much more. Um, an hour, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, 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 oh, I'm sorry, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, um, it's crazy. So yeah, the flow was really big, really big, just people coming in and coming in and we're trying to help running around. Lots of volunteers come. And then at some point we didn't have enough volunteers and just, you know, trying trying our best. But but this other, the, so this family I'm talking about, so they obviously didn't, you know, couldn't afford anything and they were just sitting there and, and you know, so I, of course, I offered them the apartment as well because it's a one bedroom, so, you know, they, they can stay in the bedroom, and the, the biggest, Calif uh, the baddest California king, so I figured I'm gonna offer them, it's, it's something. And then Tamara maybe can take the couch uh, in, the, in the living room, and they've agreed gladly, they were so, so happy, because their sister, the, the man's sister was coming from Washington State to pick them up, driving. So it would, then this, if they went to our mom's apartment, the, it would cut her travel time, right? Two hours or so. so it, it, it was perfect for them, they thought. So seven in the morning, me and my, my friend, Tamara, and this, this man, his wife, and their two kids in my friend's car, we all went back to Newport Beach. And the stories they told us in the car, it's just incredible. Um, so they left yesterday, um, and this new family came yesterday. So we have them um, and their daughter. So Andre, Maria, their daughter in the in mom's uh, bedroom, and Tamara's in the living in the living room, and they're absolutely wonderful. I'm so happy we're doing it because I'm telling you, uh, since the war started, I was so depressed and I was so just can't do anything, and and it's getting worse. What can I do? This I'm so happy I'm doing it because I, I'm finally like I wake up and I'm. 
I'm almost happy again. I'm almost, it's almost normal life again because I know I'm truly helping someone in, in need. So I really hope that we can do a shelter. I really do because they really need it. Even if we can't take 10 or whatever, I mean, anything, anything helps. And if you know someone who is willing to share a room or have like a guest, a guest house or an RV in the backyard, anything, um, there are, there are, I can share where to go and how to sign up and people will call you and bring you, volunteers will, you won't even have to go to the border, volunteers will bring you a person or a family to your home. And it's usually just two, three days, sometimes a day. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be long term at all, so. Okay, so as these are some of the background information I told you, I told you about earlier, um, you heard from Tatiana what people are going through and how difficult that it's been. So I want to tell you, Tatiana touched on a number of the things that are needed uh, there. This is actually a picture of a church. I think this is, this might be Promise Church. I'm not sure. It's one of the churches that literally they pushed the pews back and put out cots for people. It's pretty amazing, right? Um, so we're going to go through a little bit more about what's needed. You know, one of the things is that, that they need are supplies. Um, they're very specific supplies. People were going down and giving lots of clothes, but that really didn't work. Most of that's ended up in a landfill. They just, they need like things like new flip flops because they're, they're coming from cold weather into warm weather and baseball hats and they need baby food and diapers. Any, when was the last time people here bought diapers? Like they're really expensive. Oh my goodness. So, um, the other thing that they need is housing, short-term housing, what Tatiana was saying, just a few nights to stay where they can catch their breath, make travel plans, wait for someone to pick them up, whatever it is. There is long-term housing needs um, that Home for Refugees is getting involved in. As I said, they can't work right now. The whole Biden administration, there's being some pressure to put on them to allow them to work as well, but you know, the American bureaucracy being what it is. Um, Obviously, there's monetary donations. There are organizations that are truly trying to help, um, such as Home for Refugees, Jewish Family Services. If they, if a family doesn't have the money to get where they need to go, Jewish Family Services is right there. They said, I love how they put it. They said, if they come across the border, we're there for them. We don't care what color, race, whatever, we're there for them. I like them. I like the Jewish people. They're awesome. Um, and then there's Slavics.org as well, which is some of this grassroots that's trying to organize some of these things. Um, Nancy and I had a nice Zoom call uh, with a woman there. So um, this is our proposal. Do you want to go through our proposal? Sure. Okay. So this is what Nancy and I think we can do. Okay. So what, what are we talking about? The, all those things are available, the supplies, the short-term housing in your home, that's all available through a variety of places. Sean and I just didn't have time to put out together a handout, but we, we, we know got the we've got the information and we'll get it to you. But we're wondering whether, uh, so um, there's two way. ways. Short-term housing in homes, we could, we could do that and we could kind of help coordinate it from here to have a, a group here that's kind of coordinating that. That's one way. I mean, the physical stuff is a lot easier because you've already got beds and washing machines and cook kitchens in your home. We're proposing, but the, it's, it's also harder because the people who are, are coming in are going to be isolated from each other. They won't be near other Ukrainians. Um, how do we know where the resources are, that kind of thing. The other one we're talking about is should we have people come here on site? And we're talking about the two-story building. This is all very short term. The building's going to be here for at least another month. And, um, you know, we'll do, we'll, it's seat of the pants. We'll do what we can. Um, we would be providing room and board. We would maybe providing laundry if we've got a laundry hookup, but we don't have a washer and dryer. So, so if we can figure out renting a washer and dryer or somebody has extras, we might be able to hook them up. 
um, safe place. We have that that building has three bathrooms in it. I figure it's got five bedrooms, the three in the back of suite three and two upstairs rooms. The big meeting room in the back of suite four has no car has no flooring in it right now, and it might be better as a like a dining room office place for them to work at. That's kind of my thoughts right now. And um, so they need a safe, these people need a safe place to regroup. Some of them have money. That's one of the things we're, we'll get to later. But if you think about it, if you were taking all the money you've got right now and leaving your home and you don't know when you can work again, they're trying to save money. They, you know, they may have money, but they don't want to spend it on $200 a night on a hotel. <laughs> so things that we would need. We would need flexibility and problem solving a lot. Um, we would need a tax force, some people that are willing to manage this, that, to, to try and, I mean, I'm, Sean and I may be part of this, but we're not going to do it by ourselves. <laughs> uh, we need people to offer beds, linens, towels, and foods to come to the church that, how, as fast as we can, um, and people to stay at church. Um, I've, we've talked to our insurance agent. They just said they're uncomfortable with us just turning the church over to people that we don't know and leaving. So somebody, that means overnight, too. Now, you can bring your bed and you can sleep, or maybe you have a camper that you could bring or something. But, you know, we have, um, so we would need to figure that out. And then we need people to pick up at the border, and there may be some people to delivery that that's a possibility of a way you can help. And then people to drive around here. If we don't figure out the laundry situation here, you might they may need to go to the laundromat. It's probably been days since they've been able to do wash. Um, that all kinds of things, get them to the airport, get them to, it, it's figuring out what, what is it they need. So um, this is the, you know, what is, it, what is it gonna cost? No one's expected to be burdened, you know, we're not gonna ask for you to pay the plane ticket. There are resources to pay, pay, pay. These people mostly have a contact in the US somewhere that they are trying to get to but they can't make any arrangements until they're on, on the US side because they don't know when they're coming through. So they come through, they may be wanting to buy a car, they may be wanting to rent a car. It's, it's all kinds of things to get them to the next site. Um, there are organizations to help with that financial thing. There will be some costs for us though, as I can't say there won't be. We, there's, you know, we're gonna, if we ask for donations and we find out, okay, but we're short two cots, we need to buy them, or we need to get some food in here to start be, to be able to feed these people when they get here. They're, they're, we haven't quite figured out what, <laughs> what our budget is yet, but the, there's, there's also some money in the, in the, what was formerly the ATM fund that we could use for that. And, you know, whether we do a plate share or something to help replenish that, but we would need seed money, certainly. And that would be part of the ask for the board from the board. Um, insurance issues. I've talked with our insurance agent, and they've, she's talked with the underwriter. The issues they have is we need to understand that since we, the you, the church does not own any vehicles, we do not have car insurance. So you're you're doing all this on your own car insurance. If you're driving your car and, and doing volunteer work, you're, this is true anytime. You're doing it on your own insurance. And uh, they, but they do ask that we have somebody on site if we have people staying here. The third thing they asked for was, isn't there an umbrella organization that you should be going under? And we no, no, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> they tried. <laughs> so, um, discussion. Do we have anything else we wanted to tell them? Uh, no. This, like I said, this is kind of. It is, this is like something that needed to happen yesterday, right? So it would mean kind of scrambling. I, I'm willing to give up my day off tomorrow to work on this. <laughs> so we do have sign-ups and everything, but we want to take to your questions uh, and everything. So I'm sure we have lots of questions going on here. So uh, I saw Jan's hand up first. Let me see. Do we need a... Uh, this. I don't think it's on. Can, is it on? Okay. My question is, um, when it comes to the washer and dryer hookup, um, wouldn't we be able to go on like Craigslist or Marketplace or something? See, because a lot of times you'll find those free when people yeah. buy new upgrades and stuff that they're giving those away. I mean, if we could find something, we have a truck. 
Um, oh, awesome. You awesome. know, and so if yeah. we can find something like that, I wouldn't mind going and helping get okay. that set up. Cool. Thank you, Jan. That's a great idea. I had three quick questions. Uh, one is, does our sewer capacity, is it okay to handle a, a large amount of uh, Where's Deborah? Waste. waste, whatever? Yes, okay. Secondly, um, how does this operate? Is it parallel to the other program you already started? For the Ukrainians and uh, or not Ukrainians, but the Afghanistan. for the Afghanistan. Afghanistan. No, this is it's not parallel per se. Um, we're working with Home for Refugees. They they're coming in on a totally different visa, and they are allowed to work. And so we will be working with them. So that team of five, which includes me, we we will be working on that. But we're not ready to do that. We're still in the middle of training, and they already told us it's about an average wait of a month before you get someone uh a, a family assigned to you okay. so yeah it would, there could be overlap there or there definitely could be uh, but hopefully by then we would be like old hats <laughs> the final question was with our tenants are they okay with it have we talked to them about it we haven't it's on my list of things that we would need to do is to talk to them i yeah, did talk to right yeah so lynn <laughs> lynn back here uh, i spoke with her this morning and she's already on board but uh yeah so they're already like oh i'm sure there's people in the quakers who'd be willing to help out i have i personally don't have any fears that people here would be willing to to help out I'm sorry, Lynn. I, I would be amazed if anyone in the Quaker meeting objects to helping refugees on this day. <laughs> yeah. How, how would we deal with the language barrier? So we're really blessed to have Tatiana here. So that's part of it. A lot of them do speak English or at least some English. They're used to it. There's another wonderful app called Google Translate. I used that when I was in Italy a lot. That's a happy thing. Um, and Elaine Diorio, I don't know. Elaine, do you, you speak some? Elaine, very little. Very little. Yeah. Uh, my, yeah. Our family is, my family's actually from the Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, we have cousins there, second cousins. I grew up speaking Ukrainian, but I don't have anybody to talk Ukrainian to in California, so I speak very little. Very, very little. Enough to get by. Enough yeah. to get by. Enough yes. to get by. So that's what we need. Yeah. <laughs> Just get by. It, it, it would be kind of, it'll be an adventure. <laughs> that's for sure. Oh, you speak Russian? Is it really? Does anybody here speak Russian at all? Anybody learned it in high school or anything? Uh, Lynn is holding up a little bit, little bit. I don't know if anybody in the uh, in the chat. We've got like forty people there. Uh, and oh, so Tracy asks also, do the kitchen items stove work? I believe that they do, right? Yes, they do. I'm getting nods. Uh, and do we need security? And security on site for the people. I don't know. We have the security cameras already set up, I believe, uh, but we don't have any. No, they're not. They're not set up anymore. Uh, so Sarah Jones wanted to ask about security on site for the people. I think we just need to make sure that their doors are locked and mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So, and we've got Maria over there too and Mithanwi. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering um, if we find um, temporary housing where families will be willing to take. A Ukrainians in for short stay. Uh -huh. Is there a um, uh, is there a parameter of about how far away um, they can be? You know, they could help. No, like there's. If they live in Los Angeles, would that? Would that be okay? No, I don't think so. I mean, just the main thing is that, you know, they're arriving and they're hot and they're tired and then take another, you know, four-hour drive is kind of hard. Okay. That's why we're yes. trying to also get a lot of the San Diego churches involved and even our San Diego church. They don't have the facilities that we do, but they, they may be able to help out in other ways, like giving rides for people okay. up here, that kind of thing. I'm in talking to Suzelle Lynch, who's their minister in residence. She's temporarily there. but um, And so I'm talking to some other people as well about possibly helping out and tapestry you know, uh, other UU congregations that okay. may not have the ability that we do. We happen to have an empty building. Right. Awesome, right? Yeah. So. Okay, so um, if uh, people in Orange County were willing to host a family, would that be okay? 
Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Tatiana's going thumbs up. And Maria, <laughs> as well, has been raising her hand, too. There was an issue with the oven there where we had to turn the, the, the breaker switch off because of some problem with the stove in the old kitchen. So it, it, It's okay. It's just that we worry if we leave it on that things will get set on that thing and the burner oh, will get, and so we'll start a fire. So as long as we're aware of that, we're fine. This stove is a little cranky, but... <laughs> I'll need to check with my neighbor, but I have a neighbor who was willing to offer her home to an Afghan family. She may be willing, she has several extra bedrooms and so forth, to offer it in, in this regard. Awesome. I was thinking as an option, since uh, they're not able to work, I would hire them, pay cash, to do things around the house, and it might really work out for some people, you know, that feel useful too, right? Yep. Or even do yard work or house cleaning or windows or whatever, so it may be an option. Yeah. The model is telling me, yeah, I mean, there's many, many people are willing oh. to do, they're willing to do, you know, the house cleaning, babysitting, uh, anything and everything, so that would be helpful. Sorry, can I just quickly, someone mentioned, L, uh, so LA hosting someone in LA or a church in LA? Trying to. That's wonderful too because people, when they come here, many of them, they just want proximity to an airport. Like here it would be John Wayne and LAX, right? If they're in LA, LAX, right? So, yeah, absolutely. If there are people willing to host, the, the, the were, we were taking people to, to, to LA actually from the border. There were quite a few going there because they found hosts there. So, yeah. As long as there is an airport. Yeah, and there, there, there is a people down there that do try to vet people. So Tatia can put you in touch with them. Tatia was telling me that there was kind of a creepy guy hanging around there. And they were like trying to make sure that none of the refugees were bothered by this creepy guy. So because there are people that are taking advantage of Ukrainian refugees right now. So uh, there is a vetting process. There's even a couple places on site, or, I'm sorry, online that you can sign up with. There was a, a Harvard... Uh, couple of guys they started this website and you upload you know your driver's license and where you're from and they will do a background check on you for free and then um, make sure that you're okay and then they'll hook you up with people's too so there's lots of ways to do it but yeah. but Tatiana um, knows of people down there that can do it specifically I can tell you I can tell you how to do it like how I did it because it's very local it's very local so this list that that's uh put together by the volunteers, by the, 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 the grassroots at the border. It's a list. I can give you the link. So you put your info there, and that's what I did. And then somebody will call you and ask you a series of questions and also ask you if you could please, you know, um, if you're willing to uh, give us your social account because they want to kind of take a look and see that you're normal. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you don't, that's fine. Just give them email and phone. And they will talk to you. It's just that they want to do the best they can to sort of. But then, it, it, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it's up to the family, right? You meet the family and, and you know, it's nobody, nobody can guarantee anything, right? And you need to realize that too. No, it, these are people, um, human factor, you know, nobody's just, we're all doing our best at, 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 this, at this point, just trying to help. So... Yeah, I think so. so a couple of things I also want to note is that this is something of a temporary, I mean, we don't know what the future will hold, but it's supposed to be a temporary. There are only 100,000 people that are allowed to be on this humanitarian parole. Many of them were here already are on that list. So they were, say they were vacationing here, they're allowed to stay, that kind of thing. This may end in a few months. We don't know what may happen, but it may end. It seems to be somewhat of a short term. Hopefully also some pressure to help people find work um, and that sort of thing. We're passing around a sign-up sheet about what you're willing to do because unless we get people willing to help out, we can't do this. So we need everybody involved in whatever shape or form that you can do. So we're sending around that spreadsheet. If you're online chat, uh, put it in 
the chat that what you're willing to help and what you think you can do. We'll also send around another email that will gather more information as well so that people know, but sign up as best you can. Um, oh, here's an interesting idea. Randy says, Camp de Beneville has quite a few beds available. Has anyone contacted them? No, Randy, could you contact them for us? That would be weird. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, Randy, could you contact them and, and, and let us know? And then uh, Bill uh, Dorlich, Randy says, sure. Um, Bill says, uh, where can I send money? Uh, really good question. There are a number of different organizations. I can recommend Slavics.org as one of them. Um, they, they definitely need money. Jewish Family Services needs money um, to help out them. I don't know. I'm trying to think of some other ones. Just part of the list. Yeah, we'll, put, we'll, we'll be part of the list that we'll put out if you want to make a, a monetary donation. So thank you, Bill, uh, for this. So we've got... I'm, I Honestly, when's the earliest? If, if I have my druthers, Thursday or Friday. I mean, if we can hit the ground running, if we can organize, who's got cots, who's got linens, who could do this? I mean, at this point, we've got bathrooms. We need to stock the TP. <laughs> you know, uh, we can get food. <laughs> That's right. Sarah knows where to get it. <laughs> she knows. We've, we've got a shower here. We, we do have a shower. Um, and so we're going to need keys for, to give people to go there. But we'll have like a big key or something. So I meant to ask about that. Yeah. Oh, security for them. You know, so having. Yeah. To, um, take advantage of them and they don't yes. know who they are and yeah that's what yeah. i'm talking about and gotcha i was going to talk to you about keys and how we could w yeah. organize that and so i've got ideas around that okay but that's and one he of the said that someone had to be on site from the site. church at, yeah all the time so maybe that would help the well that and that's the advantage of having a member on on site at the church and tatiana has already volunteered to be partly that but we can't be just one person and maybe there could be shifts and that sort of thing too so do, do you need I mean, I know that there's these organizations, and I've already sent money to, like, Save the Children and UNICEF and things, but do you need money donated to here to do these things? Because I can't, I can't have anybody coming to my house, and I can't stay here, but I can help supply stuff if we need supplies. Absolutely. We're going to need supplies, water, food, you know, mm -hmm. blow-up mattresses, you know. If you've got blow-up mattresses or cots or anything that you think, pillows, blankets, linens, all of that bring it here um, and you know I'll send out an email and we'll look at who we've got on the list and if we can do this I'll be here at church tomorrow well Sarah will be here at the church tomorrow you could bring things between 11 and 2 Sarah will be here at the church um, if you're willing to be an emergency contact you know like I live eight minutes from the church you know I could be here very quickly if need be um, all that sort of thing so our thought was to start off a little small like two or three families and then kind of grow up from there, like get our feet wet and figure out what we're doing and what's actually needed, that kind of thing, um, and see what we can do. So, uh, yes, Corey. Oh, sorry. Oh, Alan, I'm sorry, Alan. Yeah, I'm, as uh, the uh, safety coordinator here, I feel it's probably should be my job to help with whatever kind of, of safety or security that, they, uh, that these people need. And uh, I, I can't volunteer her, and my mobility is kind of limited yeah, yeah. right now. But I would like to do whatever I can, including staying here at night, if uh, that's uh, if, if, if that's well, workable. That's wonderful. Well, if you know, again, this will be all of our problem solving. And just remember, Alan, you're not alone. You've got a whole community here of wonderful people as well. So it's not just your responsibility; it's all of us. But I really appreciate it. And, and if you yeah. can make it, we'll figure out a way to make it work. We've got a youth room. We could put people in to sleep overnight or something too. Yes. So Corey. So yeah, Sean. Quick question. I has a has a discussion started on an interfaith effort in Orange County with this, rather than just us stepping up to the plate. It would seem, from an efficiency standpoint, to have anyone who's involved in the whole council involved in this discussion too, rather you know because you could have a lot of other uh, you know. Uh, religious organizations involved in this rather than just us. 
Absolutely. Well, we've been trying. <laughs> so one of the people that also that Tatiana knows of, she put me in touch with is a woman named Lindsay. And she started calling around to all of the churches and Tatiana put her in touch with me. And so that's how some of this all sn snowballed. There are a lot of churches. And it's an interesting thing because some of them are already doing things and they're like, we can't do any more, you know, whatever it is. I'm hoping to get more involved. And if you know of contacts, by all means, um, you know, let us know because I think that's one of the things I think that I think I can get tapestry possibly on board and San Diego wants to do something. They were at that meeting with Slavics.org as well, but they may not, they don't have the facility that we do, right? But they might be able to help out in other ways. So, and there's, you know, Mark's Presbyterian, right? St. Mark's Presbyterian. There's a ton of wonderful churches in the area. And so I'll be talking with the Interfaith Council to see if they can do things. Um, you know, with Ramadan going on, it might be a little hard for some of the mosques, but some of the Jewish communities could very well be doing things. And yeah, so I think that a lot of it is that people don't know how big of a crisis it is right now down at the Mexican okay. border. Say yes, go for it, sorry. Cool. Yeah, I mean, Deventable is a great idea. Yeah, say that over. Yeah, it's, this is more to Randy, uh, if he's still listening. I mean, I'm going to be at Deventable you know, on Thursday in the mid-afternoon, and I'll be talking directly with Janet during the next couple of days. Cool. So. Yeah, it, Randy doesn't have to, you know, I could, I could follow up with it. Yeah, Deventable's remote, but if we can figure the driving issue. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there, there's all kinds of, we should be doing this, it would be a lot more efficient if we did this, you know, in a coordinated way with about lots of churches. The fact is we've got a thousand people in a gymnasium in Mexico and another 1,500 on the streets in Mexico, and I don't know how many are on the streets on the U.S. side, and um, we're just trying to solve an immediate problem, and it's not going to be efficient. Yeah. I just wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to answer also, I'm sorry, there's some stuff that's been coming through here. So Valerie Armstrong said, is there a way of uh, coordinating help that she can do remotely. Absolutely, Valerie. We might need some stuff online. People can sign up for things about who's going to take this or what shift or who's going to bring in what, that kind of thing. And Tatiana knows of, of an organization that does that as well. They, they have, they're really, those grassroots people, man, they are really amazing. Um, and we can beg, borrow, and steal from what they're doing as well. And if you want to bring stuff down to the border, there's a place there for a sign up. So I'll send that out as well. Um, Sherry Lushen, she says, she says she can bring linens and can help on site. Woohoo! Thank you, Sherry. Um, uh, Matthew P says he's a. He says I have a California Guard card and it can probably help with security on Saturday or Sunday next weekend. Excellent. Thank you. If we need that, awesome. And uh, Nygaard said they can deliver food this weekend. Francie says I can bring towels and diapers. Uh, William. Uh, yeah, you can give us money if you want to give it to us. That's totally cool. <laughs> We're having just put in the thing for the Ukrainian refugees yeah. or something in the in the byline, and and uh, we'll make sure that that money gets used for that. So definitely, thank you. Um, uh, Sharon Ball says she has an arrow bed. Um, she can donate monies, diapers, etc. And she can do a limited local driving. So there's, there are going to be need for drivers and things like that. So thank you, everyone online who also are offering. We're going to send out a link where maybe you can also or an email and just respond to me. And we're going to keep all this information of who can do what and who's willing to do what. So yes, Marilyn. What will your times be Tomorrow, 11 to 2. Right, Sarah? Um, I'll be here before that. Be so she'll be here 1030 tomorrow. But generally, 11 to 2 is a really good uh, range, but she'll be here at 1030. Okay, so you do need, you can use the air mattress. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Just make sure it works. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have, like. I have three different pumps, so one ought to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to need people on site to help get things set up and ready. Um, I was going to like, I have a TV sitting in my living room that I'm not doing anything that we thought would be nice to set up for the kids. They could watch, you know, Moana or something like that. Um, give the parents a break or something. Um, so we've, we've got a lot of things and we'll just, we're gonna need to just jump in and if we can get people here, start bringing up Thursday, Friday, I think that would be awesome. Um, Cause the need is now and the need is great. So, I'm sorry, Marilyn, one more question. Yeah. Camping cots would be useful, yes, Peggy, thank you. Yeah, um, just a couple things I've noticed while, while uh, volunteering there. Uh -huh. um, and something I thought about, I'm just gonna say it so that people think about and maybe someone will come with an idea. So 
um, there is like a, a Motel 6 across the border. It would be great to have a fund, a fund that we can use to buy, you know, rooms there. Yeah. And maybe if someone is good at, like, wouldn't it be a great PR for Motel 6 to say we are sponsoring Ukrainian volunteers, even if they can give us a discount, yeah. and then write off it in taxes as well, right? Yeah. Isn't that how it works? So if there are people who can, like, call and talk to managers, Motel 6, there are a couple others around. And it, it's great because then, um, so volunteers and cars take them, uh, to the hotel that's nearby and then they sleep there overnight and then they can come back to the border and the volunteers can feed them and in their cars take them to the airport or wherever. So it's yeah. just that one day is so crucial for them to go take yeah. a shower, sleep and the next day and there are people there to help them. Yeah. So a, a fund for motels. Yeah. Like that family I met who they didn't have any money and they had to sleep there with the kids. Anyway, so that is one. Another one is if there are people at church who you know someone who are good at, and there is a way to write to senators, write to representatives about getting the work visas to these people because it's, it's ridiculous that yeah. they don't have a way to work. It's yeah. So just, you know, just, just doing that, you know, just, just reaching out to politicians about getting Ukrainian refugees uh, a, a ability to work. Yeah. This Ava Lou, I'm looking Ukrainian at you. Refugee. <laughs> right, right here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Ava Lou, I know you know how to do this. Uh, that would be awesome. Uh, and I also just want to say, Tracy says, this is a great meeting. When is the next, when is the next get this done meeting? I want to jump. Yes. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I, I, we have yeah. a jumper. Okay. You, you said before that a lot of the clothes are going to but what about children's clothes and toys? Is that you know, that we're going to have to look at what, you know, what are they coming in with and what's needed. I'd rather that we wait and see okay. rather than just going out and say, okay, donate, you know, whatever this. Okay. Okay. I think for their own dignity and worth, I think it's really good to have like Target gift cards that they can go buy yeah. things okay. that they need themselves as well. Okay. So, but we're going to need things like shampoo and soap yeah. and, you know, all those sorts of things that people can sign up with. I, I need to leave, but I'm all for this. Okay, right? awesome. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right, so the sign-up sheets have been going around. Anybody that, need it? Has everybody had a chance at a sign-up sheet? No. Uh, I think, are they, does Don have one? Don and Sandy? Okay. Okay, well, I I think, you know, I, I know we haven't answered all, oh, so Carolina. Like yeah, they're all the yes. same. Yeah. yeah, they're the same. Um, so, sorry. Uh, so it sounds like uh, we're we're thinking about opening up here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can also do your individual home if you like, right? I'm sorry, I should speak in the mic. You can do your own individual home as, as well. We just think this way it would be easier on everybody because then you've got a team of people. Everybody's oh, I can't take people to the airport today. Can someone else do that? You know, like we've we've got all the resources to when we're together, right? Um, so we think that that would be great. But by all means, Tatiana's taking people in. I'm thinking, I've got a couch. You know what I mean? It's not much, but it's a couch. I've slept on it. Um, so I could bring in someone just for there. So if you're willing to do that, you know, go for it. Um, what do you think about, like, having, like, some, if we have some kids, I can bring them to, you know, my judo school. They can train there just to get some recreational, like, activity outside of you know, just being here all day and stuff. Is that something you think we might need? Cause Absolutely. Because I'm willing to do that. Because we have some Russian-speaking trainers there at my, my judo school, and we have some Ukrainian kids there. I think it would be good oh, for them. Right on. Well, you know, I think that's going to depend on each family because some of them, you know, like literally the average time that they stay is, is 48 hours. And so, if, but we have like this one family is going to be five days, so that would be great um, to get them out and to do some other things as well. So. Because like this family that are with us, they're so wonderful, and like I want to show them everything, everything, and I wish I had time, and I would love some help, like from if someone would like to take them to the beach or take them, show them something, you know. So volunteers who are just willing, you know, and language is not important at all. Again, Google, and they're so grateful. They just they just want to see stuff, right? While they're here, look at cat. Because this is such a gorgeous place that we live in, and it's just you know. Something, something for them to take their mind off of what's happening now to their families and friends and everything that they've been through. So yeah, so volunteer. I mean, 
we need help with everything, everything. I mean, you can volunteer and do so many things, and yeah. this one of them. Yeah. All right, I think we're good. All right. All right, gang. All right, we're going to take a look at that list. Let's do this. Thank you. Woo! Awesome. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> thank you all for staying. I, I know there was a short notice, and I really appreciate and it. And thank you all you Zoomers. Thank you for staying on as well.